Well, the colors are starting to change. As you know, it's a beautiful time of year. You know, fall is the time for hunting, for sure. There's lots going on. And so, because there's lots going on, this week on the show, we're gonna actually do two different hunts. So we're gonna start off with a deer hunt. And it's my wife that actually has a tag. I'm gonna let my son tag along. He's nine, um, Cade. And uh, anyways, my wife, she had a tag, oh, I don't know, three or four years ago. We had some pretty exciting moments and she wasn't able to tag out. So this year we're hoping that she can finally feel her first big game tag. And then, as I mentioned, we're gonna go do some pheasant hunting and that's with Pheasants Forever. You know, for the past several years, I've been tagging along with one of the hunts that they give away at their banquets that's actually auctioned off at the banquets. And we see all the action that's going on with that, kind of a prelude to the pheasant season that uh, is just gonna be getting started here soon. So, let's start off with that deer hunt. Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. As mentioned earlier, Candace was the one with the tag for this hunt, but Cade came along to see all the action. Little did he know, however, the conditions we'd be hiking in. It's always funny how you never know what the weather will give you here in Idaho. All September we went nearly without any moisture, and then the day before Candace's hunt started, it rained like crazy and then snowed a bit overnight. So in literally a day or two, it dropped 20 degrees and left the area blanketed in a few inches of snow. It was these conditions we found ourselves in as we hiked up toward the area we hoped to be overlooking at first light. As happened so often, we were late making the long, difficult hike, and so when it was light enough to shoot, we weren't where we'd hoped to be. But because we were so fogged in, it didn't matter. We were getting snowed on as we hiked and could barely see more than 50 to 100 yards at any given time. Quite honestly, I think both Candace and Cade were having second thoughts about how fun this was going to be. We did eventually make it to the spot we'd hoped to be at to have a good vantage point over a nice hillside, but we were still fogged in. All we could do was hunker down under a cover of a big pine tree and try to get warm. Needless to say, we put every layer on that we had and broke out the hand warmers as well, but still it was hard to keep the cold out. After about an hour, the fog finally started lifting. We had brief moments where we could see the area around us, and so of course, we would glass all we could until more fog rolled in. But with time, the fog became less and less until finally we could see all the hillside in front of us. However, by now we'd missed the key first few hours of the day when you expect to see deer moving. This late in the morning, they'd probably already be bedded up, and sure enough, we didn't spot any deer in front of us. All right, so that was kind of a bust, getting up here in the in the clouds and we just couldn't see. We hunkered down and put every layer that that we had on and, and just waited and it did clear up and it's a beautiful hillside, but nothing's moving now. It is a couple hours after first light though, but we're all cold enough that we got to get up and get moving. So we'll just kind of keep hiking and see what happens. We worked on over to the next finger ridge to get a new area to view, all the while keeping an eye out for deer around us. We did cut some fresh tracks of deer that had most likely walked across the clearing while we were fogged in, and it was Candace who briefly spotted a deer sneaking away from us. It turned out to be a young three or four point buck, but it got into some brush quickly and I didn't have any time to get the camera on it. Getting to the next ridge and quickly glassing up some of the pockets of trees across the way, I spotted a deer bedded out in the open. By the time I got the camera on it, it had gotten up and joined two other deer and then started feeding. We hoped to find some antlers on them, but no luck. Three does fed out in the open and then worked back into another pocket of trees. We can see some does down there and uh, earlier today we saw a young buck that we saw for like four seconds. We tried our hardest to spot other deer to glass and hopefully one with antlers, but no luck. Eventually the cold got us and we had to work our way back off the mountain. 
We did try a different route to see some new country, but no luck finding any more deer. Definitely not the way I hoped Candace's first day of the deer hunt went. Well, Cade just said that he wished on every hunting trip we got an animal. Of course, that would not make it hunting and uh, would not make it nearly as fun, of course. We're packing out right now. What, it definitely wasn't what we were hoping for. Um, just with the, with the weather that we had, we were fogged in for probably two hours, getting snowed on, freezing, and uh, just saw a few deer. So not quite what we'd hoped for. All right, so we are now switching gears from the deer hunt. We're actually out gonna do a pheasant hunt. And this is in part with Pheasants Forever. You've seen that I've done a youth hunt with Pheasants Forever for the last several years. However, this year, schedules just did not work out. And so instead, I'm gonna actually join with one of the adult hunts that was auctioned off. So we've got a couple dogs here, Teton and Tucker, that are gonna be uh, work, doing, doing the work today. And you know, a lot of times it's about the kids and things like that. Today, it's about the dogs. It's always fun to watch dogs go out and hunt. So these are with Chris Hinckley, um, these two dogs. So let, let's go ahead and switch gears. Let's go start this pheasant hunt and watch these dogs work. Down below. I thought we just put one up in here, one down there. In that fence? In that yeah, right cover. in that fence. Yeah. We'll go back to this. So first off, we had to get the birds ready. Being an auctioned off hunt and happening a little before the general pheasant hunt started, this had to be a hunt of planted birds on private property. Three Pheasant Forever volunteers, Ernie, Willie, and Glenn, were on hand to make sure this hunt went off as planned, and were the ones helping to disperse the roosters. In this situation, it's not just a matter of letting them fly out of the cage, because then most would fly right out of the area we could hunt. So to make sure they stayed put, at least in the general area, each rooster was taken one by one to its own spot. And then again, making sure they didn't just fly off as soon as they were let loose, there was a specific process to calm the pheasant down, ending with its head tucked under its wing and then carefully placing it in a pocket of brush. Then the volunteer would quickly leave before it poked its head up. If all went well, this would help keep the birds from moving too far off as they then gave them some time before bringing the hunters out. He's all yours, aren't he? It's a pretty bird. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice one. Really nice one. So to start off this hunt, of course, we're putting some birds out. I'm out here with the Pheasant Forever guys. We've got Ernie, Willie, and Glenn, and they're all expert pheasant whispers. And so they've been working on getting these pheasants and they get them dizzy a little bit first and then they'll tuck their heads under their wing, kind of put them in a pocket of some brush and uh, back off. And the idea is that the bird kind of stays put um, so it doesn't just pick up and fly out of the, out of the area. So anyways, we got uh, Willie here is just setting out the last of 10 birds and, and then the hunt starts. So it's always kind of fun to see what's gonna happen with this and uh, we'll just see how it goes. At this point, it was time to meet our hunters. Again, this was a hunt auctioned off at the past Pheasant Forever Banquet. The winner had the option to bring along one or two hunters. In this case, it was Jeremy who won the auction, and he invited Tanner, a good friend's son, to come along with him. As I mentioned before, the dogs that would be doing the work today was Teton and Tucker, with their handler, Chris Hinckley. Glenn was also letting his 14-year-old Llewellyn setter, Toby, run with them and you'll see him find a few birds as well. Instructions were given on what Chris expected of the dogs and how he'd like Jeremy and Tanner to hunt over them, and then it was time to go. Of course, it was no surprise when the first point was made as we had planted the roosters a while earlier. It was Tucker on point and Teton quickly heading over to join him. Now I've learned from several of these hunts that just because a dog goes on point, it doesn't mean anything. Guns can be left on safety, the bird can fly off early, the rooster can give us the slip, or the hunter could flat out miss. You just never know. In this case, the gun didn't fire. Something malfunctioned, which led to the rooster making an easy getaway, at least for now. Frustrating, yes, but there were still plenty more out there and a chance to make it good. So this chunk of property here, um, Jared Finn owns this property. He works with Pheasants Forever and, and allows them to use this chunk. Um, 
to do this pheasant hunt, but the interesting thing with Jared Finn is he's actually worked with pheasants forever and put in a lot of ground cover. He, he doesn't cut everything down in the fall. He leaves a lot of corn up, leaves a lot of just, just a lot of everything up alfalfa. We've got all kinds of brush. Um, and, and in part for the deer as well, for, for deer, for pheasants, just for the animals here to, in the winter to have some habitat because what's common nowadays, of course, is just cutting everything down in the fall and so there just isn't habitat anymore. But Jared Finn has actually done quite a job at, at uh, work and working with other people on creating a lot of habitat here. Before the action gets too hot, let's meet our dog handler, Chris. Hi, as Jared mentioned, I'm Chris Hinckley with Teton Bird Dogs. We're located out in Louisville, Idaho. Today we've got Tucker. Tucker is a liver roan. He's two years old and has his master hunter. And Teton is our black roan. And he is also two years old and has his senior hunter. And will continue to run for his masters with Standing Stones Kennels. Here at Teton Bird Dogs, we offer quality German short hair pointers, specializing in the personal ability and family aspect. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, the best way to get a hold of us is at tetonbirddogs.com or Teton Bird Dogs on Facebook. Before the break, Tanner had a gun malfunction and missed an opportunity at the first rooster. A short while later, it was Toby who went motionless. Teton and Tucker quickly joined him, and then Jeremy and Tanner closed in behind. Now all three of these dogs have been trained not to go after the bird once on point. So until the hunters flush the bird, they don't budge. With the cover so thick, it was hard to see the rooster, even though it was right at Tanner's feet. <laughs> Good shot. When it jumped right out from under him, it was Jeremy who made the quick shot and dropped shot. the first pheasant nice of the day. Nice looking bird. Nice bird. When Tucker went back on point, it was Tanner that had the first shot. His gun malfunctioned last time, so hopefully that wouldn't be the case now. Okay. That rooster didn't stand a chance. The dogs quickly birdied up again, but just as quickly, the rooster took to the air and stayed just out of range. We watched where it dropped in, however, and would swing back that way later. When a rooster spooked out before either of the dogs even got wind of it, it made the mistake of flying in front of Jeremy and Tanner. The rooster had distance and speed, but Jeremy Dang. made a great shot and nailed it. Nice. Had some speed on it too. It was moving. <laughs> okay, Tucker. Tucker. No. Oh. The next rooster came up quick, but once again Tanner's gun malfunctioned. Jeremy tried a few late shots, but it was already too far out and made a clean getaway. That second misfire meant that the first wasn't a coincidence, and so they took a moment to find the problem. With the problem found and hopefully fixed, it was back to hunting. Again, regardless of how many birds are taken, I always enjoy watching well-trained dogs work. It just amazes me how hard they work and how well they can get the scent of a bird, even when running at full speed. Add on top of that trained dogs that respect one another's points and hold their points for so long, and it truly is fun to sit back and just enjoy seeing them work. That being said, with all the work they're putting in, comes more hard points like this one from Teton. Nice. Sure enough, Tanner's gun was working now and his aim was good. As you can see, the hunting didn't end yet and Jeremy and Tanner just didn't miss. After working all the areas where we had planted birds earlier in the day and coming up short at least one bird, we made one more pass back through the thick alfalfa, but still didn't kick up any more roosters. Then it was off to the areas two of the roosters that got away had gone to. After trying one area with no luck, we were on our way back when Tucker went on point. Quickly getting over there, the rooster flushed and Tanner quickly brought it back down.
Finally checking one more area out where one of the roosters had escaped to, it was again Tanner that once again had great aim at yet another bird. Nice. Okay. Now just to clarify, because these were planted roosters on private land and for the conditions they'd been approved for in compliance with the idle fishing game, the typical bag limit of three didn't come into effect. Which was good as Tanner now had four roosters to his name and Jeremy had three. Not a bad hunt at all. All right, that's going to wrap up this hunt. As you can see, you know, a pretty successful day in the field here. Jeremy and Tanner didn't miss anything. There were a couple misfires, and so there were a couple that got away. But aside from that, every bird hit the ground. So it was a, a fantastic day. What do you guys think of the hunt today? A lot of fun. Great time. Good times out here. So this is in part, this is helping the Pheasant Forever um, organization. It's a donation. We've even got another dog here that was, that was part of the fun here. But, uh, you know, if this is something that you're interested in, go to the banquets. Find a banquet in your area, go to them, support them, and donate, help out. It all goes to help the pheasants and the habitat and things like that. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Jared Scott Outdoors YouTube channel.